everyone to our weekly interim. Uh, as always, this is being recorded. Uh, this is the note well. Um, if you haven't seen it before, uh, it talks about intellectual property implications of you being here and some code of conduct stuff. Uh, please read it if you haven't seen it before. All right, so this is how it works. This is going to work logistically. First of all, um, join the, uh, the blue sheets are in the notes. Please go over there. There's a link in the Google Meet chat. There's also a link in the Zulip. Um, Zulip is where we're going to have all our technical discussion. Please do not use Google Meet chat to argue our proposals. Just only for things like, uh, I can't hear you. <laughs> just, just really meaning logistic stuff can go in Google Meet. But all technical stuff in Zulip, uh, sign the, please sign the blue sheets. Um, for queuing, we're going to use the show of hands function here in Google Meet, uh, which works pretty well. And uh, obviously, all AV and slides are here. OK, this is the agenda. Um, it, basically, usual stuff, uh, whatever is pending MLQ transport. Um, we're going to talk about the fetch PR, which is the first order of business from, from Boston. And if we have time, we'll talk about stream per track. We need to scribe. Given we're recording this, at what point do we tr give a role to the AI scribe again? I think the important function of the scribe is like, if this, if there's like a decision or an action item yeah. to make sure we write it down. We don't need to write yeah. down the entire discussion. I mean, we keep saying this and everyone that does it like tries to record verbatim, what, not verbatim, but like the thrust of every single individual comment. Um, that is quite heavyweight given all the other tools we have. Maybe, I mean, this all goes on YouTube, for instance. Um, if you just want to record like key decision points, like what we're going to do with each PR and like the important action items going forward, that's fine. And hopefully that's more sustainable for people. Yeah, I mean, I believe in the, especially if YouTube is generating a transcription, like, that will be a high fidelity and you can if it's too wordy you can just run that through your favorite ai and then it'll come out and tell you a summary of what people said <laughs> like um so yeah i i think it's fine to just so like the, the minute taking responsibilities of this meeting ought to be about like four lines okay of the non-chair non-editors in the meeting of whom i see four um, I can do was, that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mathis. Uh, will you be in Dublin so we can deliver like a boatload of chocolate to you? Yes, I'll be there. Okay, good. Send us your favorite flavors. I'm going to try to bring some peeps too. Okay, excellent. <laughs> okay. All right. With that, I'm going to hand it off to our illustrious editor who can uh, start talking. I am muted. Okay. Now I'm not muted. Okay. Wonderful. Um, thank you, everyone, who has gotten time to review the Fetch PR. Um, I realize it's a lot of text. Um, the I th there's a number of things to discuss. I think one thing is the question of whether or not subscribe only has one mode. Is that that's something you brought up, Alan? I think, right? Yes, I think that's a good discussion to have. I mean, maybe even the, uh, at least the proposal last week in the interim, as I understood it was, we were going to have one PR that was like only doing fetch and not touching subscribe. And then it's, but I'm not sure that we had like, that's definitely what the assignment was. And then I saw the discussion on the PR was like, it makes better to like, it's better to do it all in one because we can see what the final state will be, but it means we have some discussion. We didn't talk about subscribe much, like, like changes to subscribe last week were not discussed. So maybe it's good to have a discussion yeah, here about I, it. I think that was what I realized when I started writing up the PR is that we did not, we discussed what we wanted fetch to be. But I mean, the whole point of adding fetch was so we could fix a bunch of problems with subscribe. And so we don't get those benefits until we change subscribe. Well, we, um, well, we have consensus that subscribe is for the future. Um, which is somewhat vague about things like current group. 
which I think is all right. And we we purposely tabled all the subscribe stuff because has a whole bunch of like design that we're just going to complicate the discussion. I mean, I think today, I mean, if you just drop the fetch only PR, you would just have this duplicate capability where you could get like past data either in broken up into streams or or uh, in a single stream, essentially, um, which I think is okay for intermediate state, frankly. Um, that, that solves zero issues though, which kind of stinks. Like I want to close yeah. issues. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, like, but I mean, I don't want to tell you you can't do it this way, but like you are adding a lot of contention points on a single PR that maybe complicates the discussion and creates a lot of parallel parallel threads. Um, if you think that's the best way to proceed, that's fine. Um, another way to do it would be to do the sequence. Another thing to do would have a fetch PR and then like a Google doc that explains what subscribe is going to look like. That we <laughs> um, but uh, I, I guess we're not going to make that change in the next 50 minutes. So um, okay. let me let me ask a different question. What other things about the fetch PR do you feel like you need input from this somewhat small group um, to make progress that's not related to subscribe? And maybe we can just like make sure those that's covered first, and then we can circle back to what to do about the subscribe changes there. Um, I don't know, actually. Oh, that's resolved. Okay. Oh no. Um, Alan, thank you. You made a number of excellent suggestions. Um, I think I was reading, looking through the comments. Um, I don't. Mm. I don't maybe see maybe one thing that came up was about and maybe is that like do are we agreed that fetch needs its own id space or do we want to try to reuse the subscribe id space like there's trade-offs there that's sort of that's sort of a fetch question um sure that, that's a good point i mean we could yes we could and then or maybe i don't know i know sue has you've read it i'm not sure who else in the calls read the Fetch PR, but if there's any other like fetchy things that people like want to talk about, I, I think uh, uh, one point was um, saying that uh, gaps need not have to be explicitly specified, but uh, okay would have the implicit. I think I think Alan, you had such such suggestion on that one. Uh, that's something uh, maybe it's already in. Uh, I'm driving, sorry, I'm not seeing the latest one. Uh, that that was one thing. Yeah, I, uh, I other than that, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, please. Oh, I was just saying, I haven't read the latest draft. So Ian, can you comment on like where we ended up on like- I'm actually, I'm gonna, I'll present. Um, sorry, I, I tried to incorporate as many suggestions back and forth as, as possible uh, yesterday and, and such, but I I didn't actually get through everything, unfortunately, just because I was- I think uh, one more point while, while we're doing that was, uh, do we need like two types of fetch? Um, we, we, we can remove absolute start for now, uh, unless we right. really need a uh, use case. That was another thing I, I, that comes to my mind. Yes, that, actually that's an easy one. Why don't we, why don't we do that one first? Um, let me find the text. Yes, I, I kept two modes for fetch because we had two modes that could be construed as fetch in the existing text. We discussed whether or not we wanted this instead of specifying an explicit endpoint. Um, let me, sorry, just you know, put in like a big number. Ah, uh, there we go. Oh yeah, absolute start, which basically gets you from start to um, head. And Alan is asking. Do we want two modes? Um, I I don't think we reached consensus on which one we want. I, I don't have a strong preference, but if people want to give me guidance on what to write, I am happy to do that. Okay, so let me make sure I make sure I understand what the question is. So option one is fetch has fetch always has a range, a start and an end, and if you don't know your end or you want to mean to the live head or the end of the track, then you just specify a very large end. 
and there's only one way. 62 minus one or whatever or yeah so that's one way and yep. then another way is there's two modes to fetch one that has a start and an end and one that has only a start and the implicit end is live or the end of the track is that the thing? live not the end of the track there's no way to get into the track. Well, oh, sorry, live or at the end of the track, whichever is okay. Sorry, yes. Yeah. If, if the track is not live, you'll go to the end, and so yes. It, okay. It, I apologize. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So does, no. that, does that accurately summarize the two? Uh, okay. Excellent. Now there's a queue. Mo. Well. Yeah, I don't think that the I don't think the issue is whether there's a code point for uh, end uh, or not. I think the issue is whether or not the semantics of fetch mean you can keep going on during the fetch or at the time of the fetch request being received that's when you decide the live edge at this point is all you're going to get or you know the the the, res the resolution of it happens at either the fetch time or continuously during the actual object sending that i think is the is the real issue not whether or not there's a code point for end or just use 9999 Okay. Um, that is an interesting question. That I I just want to interject. It never occurred to me that the latter was an option. I mean, vaguely occurred to me, but I didn't think we were discussing that previously. But I, I'll let other people finish. I, I I think the thrust of the discussion, like as chair, I would say the thrust of the discussion last week was that um, the question is, yeah, what, what what would be the behavior when you fetched beyond the end? But I don't think like keep delivering stuff beyond the live edge was ever on the table. That is my recollection, recollection as well. Like there, there's no such thing as like an, an ongoing fetch. Like that was what the working group wanted was if somebody has a different opinion about what we decided last week, please correct us. um so it, is it me yes <laughs> yeah um yeah i was trying to i think you're um i agree with i think alan's perpetration I, I really wonder if this is these two modes i think it's more what mo said about it's it's about behavior is it and and i would say that the range can be an abstract or, or symbolic point rather than a value and that actually makes it clearer probably in this quest say fetch from this value up to live edge and as soon as you catch up it's like you completed the request would be my uh, as reasonable interpretation of this uh, um, well that's a catch up is a weird term because like when, once you reach this when point, you delivered all the day when the responder to the fetch request has delivered all the data it can get uh matching what's like okay now we're into I would have to wait potentially for more data before I can deliver it. Well, so like, I mean, I, I think you're, well, Suha says, well, go ahead, Suha, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll go, I'll add myself to the queue. I, I think just re, uh, re recollecting the, what, what happened last week, we agreed uh, saying that uh, when a fetch request uh, happens at, at any point, any publisher, we basically look at um, what can be uh, served, especially if it's live, what can be served at, at the live edge at that publisher. And, and and that's where it, it basically ends. Um, and again, even if if we don't didn't had if we didn't had absolute start, but we had absolute end, people can still someone can still put an end that is a really big number. It doesn't mean that you'll get that number. Uh, the the maximum you, if a track is entered and if, if your range is within that track uh, end, you'll get everything in that. But if track is live, you'll get where what uh, where the live edge ends. I think if I'm not wrong, uh, Ian's uh, text captures that uh, on, on what fetch can do and cannot do at some point. Um, and I feel like absolute start is kind of a subset of uh, uh, the range that we have. Uh, but but the semantics are captured in some in, in Ian's text somewhere, um, if I remember correctly. The the intent of so, wrote, just let, let me clarify that the intent of what I wrote is that at the moment you get back the fetch okay that that will tell you what the final object that you will receive is and mm -hmm. i think that text is in there and that's that was always kind of what i intended to write and part of the reason for that is if you want to basically request data before and after uh the live edge you're going to probably want to issue the subscribe and the fetch at, at, at you know in some time sequence that's relatively close and so 
you don't want Fetch reevaluating the end when you've already have a subscription ongoing and you've already received like the new data, right? Like that's like whichever sequence you decide to do these two things in doesn't really matter. But like, you and it depends on the use case. But like you don't want to continue to reevaluate the Fetch after the Fetch OK, right? Like at that point, I want to know like what I'm going to get so I know what to subscribe to or vice versa. That was the intent. Yeah. Yeah, Magnus, I don't know if, if this is just a wording issue, but when you say that like, catch up, that implies that the live edge I'm, moves. I'm, and... Yes, to clarify, I'm fine with what uh, Ian said here. I, it okay. makes sense from a fetch perspective. Okay. I just come from the fact that we have two different requests. I, I just pulling this from part of my experience with RTSP 2.0. <laughs> and there you only have one type of play request, but you can have changes when you yeah. come up to the live edge. You would have well, to have transition in that point, but and this is true here. We have two different requests, so I think what Ian says about yes, you evaluate what when you request uh, what you're gonna get, and and if you can respond at that point, it's fine. So if the client is uh, not super concerned about buffering data, then the, like the the most efficient wire efficient thing to do is to bundle is to send a fetch, you know, an open ended fetch and to subscribe to the live edge thing simultaneously and then you'll get some live stuff and you'll get some some um playback stuff and it'll be able to stitch together with no further messages no further I, control messages I, I disagree with that martin that's that's going to cause you problems right because you don't have a clean boundary what you should do is make your live subscription first it gives you an absolute start point group an object and then you should make a fetch that ends at the prior, it ends at that group and object. I that think gives you a, a clean stitch. If you leave it open like this, you have a constantly moving interface point, and I don't see how it's clean. I well, no, you, you don't. Because the, the, Go ahead, Martin. Well, the, no, because the, the, once, the, once the, if these two things come together, then, then when, the, when, the, when the sender, when the receiver of those control messages gets them, it'll say, okay, so this fetch arrives, so the fetch uh, terminates at the live edge. We'll send the fetch OK with that live edge in it. And then there will also be a subscribe for everything beyond the live edge. But that's a race condition. You just said if they arrive together, right? If they're apart by more than, say, 15 milliseconds for some reason, mm -hmm. and you've got a 60 FPS live stream, you're going to have a, you're going to have a missing object in there or, or a different endpoint. Yeah. Well, if it's described, you could have a missing my, my, object anyway, but that's another thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Yesterday or last week, we we said the way to do it is to is to do it. Subscribe's got to come first. Yeah. You're and right. then that way you can't. And then I think if you sent them both in the same flight with the subscribe coming first, and then the, and then a fetch with either nine 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 or an open range, you would the worst case is you get a small overlap, where like it processes subscribe. Then it evaluates the live edge, and then you fetch to that, and then you got an object in your subscribe and your live edge. But at least there's not a gap. There wouldn't be a gap if the subscribe comes first. Yeah. Um, Suhas. And it, yeah. Okay. And I actually, let me just. I think, I think there's general before Will's point, but going back there, I think the difference between that we started talking about, which is there are two modes of fetch, or one is that this is a little bit of it's just a spelling issue. It's what what do people want? But because people are saying that they mean the same thing. I'm sure did anybody say they mean something different. So I don't know exactly how to resolve that spelling issue. Like, do we want to take a show of hands in this small group or just let the editor pick one? Or like, I don't know if people feel strongly about one or the other, but they're, they're saying it's equivalent functionality. So. All right, I think those are good questions. We'll ask what's straight in the queue first, Suhas. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, having the range is clear. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of open-ended fetch because it kind of, Things like uh, then you have to specify. In, um, so what you're specifying for range, you you have to specify again for the open net fetch as well. Um, but having an API that says you, know, you have to always provide a range will make anyone who's implementing the client side or the player side to, especially in the smooth transition uh, use case that we talked about, figure out the end before they actually uh, put in a request. Uh, that kind of gives an um, application developer using the API very clear intent on what the fetch is doing. Um, even the other kind of meta like morphs the same thing in, in a different API, but it's, it's this having range is more clear in terms of the API usage. That, that's my kind of two cents on that one. Mike? I think you're muted. Sorry. 
I also think it's good to be uh, precise here and not have open-ended fetches per se. Um, and also, I, I'm pretty sure Alan is right that what we agreed to in Boston is that you should do a subscribe first and then a fetch to, to fill in. Um, the downside of that approach is that you lose an RTT to get the object zero of your current group. Um, so your time to first frame that you can actually decode and display uh, may suffer slightly. Um, I'm okay taking that trade off for now and coming back to it later as an optimization thing, um, because I think the clarity is important. But that's the that's the trade off. Well, yeah, I didn't. I thought uh, similar to Mike. I thought in Boston we had agreed that I mean, even though I proposed open ended fetch, we talked out of it in in favor of a discrete fetch because of its clarity. And I think we're causing problems when we can you can go into the future and and it it returns. So we had agreed that it would return an error if it couldn't fulfill your closing end range. No. Uh, okay. Let me just clarify what I think the proposal is. It's like. The open-ended, quote-unquote, open-ended fetch, as described in this PR, is a shorthand for saying start to 2 to the 62 minus 1, right? Which is already legal. If we have only one mode where there's a start and an end, you can always pass a giant number. And if your number's past the end of the track or past the live head, you're not, like, the fetch OK tells you what you're going to get, and that's what you're going to get. And so we're only asking, should there be this shorthand on the wire to say that without having to pass max int? Or do we want there to be only one way? And if you want that behavior, you pass max int. I, I'm, I'm realizing from this discussion, it's possible the two modes are adding confusion, even if like they're cleaner. <laughs> um, and so I think I'm now inclined to like have only one mode, if only because like it will make it easier for me to like ensure the text is like crisp, even if like we decide to reevaluate this and add like the open-ended thing later or the like end at live head thing later, if that yes. makes sense to people. Okay. Can anyone not live with that? Does anyone feel strongly that there should be this shorthand to say to the live head right now? Okay. Okay. I don't see anybody jumping up and down. So let's, so for like, it, it, for the action, let's remove the two modes from fetch and just have a single one that has an end. And if you mean, if you don't really know how far you want to go, you just put max int or some big number and move on. Uh, do we want to have like explicit, like this is how you do this text in this PR? Or um, do we want people to, are, are, is, is, this, is this like a feature or a bug that you can do this? <laughs> because some I, people I, think it's a bug. I think you want an example that's like, okay. for example, if you would like to subscribe to the current group, what you do is, x this is this is what you do and there's you know yeah. maybe maybe describe there's one way to do it that involves an rtt and one way that does it that does not involve an rtt but possibly involves a couple duplicate objects depending on how time is moving i don't know i i think like uh, the two examples that uh, we had in the smooth transition category there in the presentation i think some some uh, non-normative uh, way of explaining that would would be nice to have uh, for someone to look at and say how, how do i use these two apis all right. So, but, but okay. But all right. So, there, there's the one thing which is like subscribe then fetch, which does not rely on the open-ended thing at all, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> you you know explicitly what uh, what the last object in your fetch should be when you subscribe then fetch. So, we all agree that is like a preferred mode of operation. So, there's another mode of operation where I just like where I bundle the subscribe and fetch together, or the fetch and subscribe in some order. I guess we. I think Alan, you said uh, what subscribe. You still, then want, fetch. You still want subscribe then fetch. Right. If you do subscribe, then fetch semi atomic, like without wait, without waiting for an RTT, like that is a use case for an open ended thing. Um, is that like, is that is that something you want to point out to people, or is that like a defect in, <laughs> in the design that we're just kind of like it's something you can do legally, but like you don't, but we don't actually want okay. it. That's a good question. I mean, I guess that's yeah. A good do people... I mean, I, I, it sounds to me like a feature because of the one RTT thing, but um, uh, some people uh, seem to not think so. I, I looked at the notes, and I'm pretty sure we had consensus uh, at the end of the last interim that if you were able to return more than zero like objects yes. on a stream, it was non-error. Yes. And that was the answer. 
No, no. So, so I agree that's the consensus and that's fine. And I agree with that, frankly, as an individual. I, I just, I'm just, do you want to point out that there's this back door to, to like fetch without really knowing what the live edge is or not in an example? Or are we trying to like guide people away from that? I guess, is, I mean, I think this is the editorial question that we have to, that we should probably solve. And there's a bunch of people in the queue, Will. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It, it, it's nice if it's not an error. Errors are just messy because you have to re-request, right? So if we go with the open-ended, the fetch should truncate at what it thinks is the live edge. And it was mentioned earlier, if you do yes. back to back, you might have an overlap, right? Overlaps are also bad for your decoder. Your, your player has to like pull stuff out. So this goes back to Christian's proposal of an atomic subscribe plus fetch, right? Which right. would guarantee that there was no gap. And maybe that's something we should look at. But I would support fetching over the boundary because it's going to happen whether or not you intend it to happen, right? And that what the player should do is truncate at what it thinks is the live boundary at that time. If you do them back to back, we should indicate that you will probably have a smooth transition, but it's not guaranteed. And then in the future, we should look in an atomic API that would guarantee that there was a smooth transition between those uh, subsequent uh, control messages. Mo? Uh, I think there definitely should be an example that, that shows uh, an out of uh, a, a fetch that's requesting beyond uh, the, the live head and the response uh, narrowing the range down to the live head. I don't think we necessarily need to show the optimization that Mike had in mind of avoiding the round trip. So you do subscribe and then fetch immediately back to back with no RTTs. Uh, that That's fine. Um, I don't see any problem with that. I just don't know if we want to be prescriptive in the document to say, do this to avoid an RTT. I think anybody will figure it out if they want to. Um, I don't think we need the example for it. We definitely need the example for that going beyond the live head is not an error and we'll give you the subset up to yeah. the Mike? It, yeah, to be clear, the reason that you incur an RTT cost is because you need to discover what the current group is. So you don't know what you need to, where you need to start a fetch uh, to, start. to get the group head um, until you've done a, a track info or a subscribe or something to discover what the where the group that the current uh, live edge um, at your relay is. And so right now, um, as far as I understand, we agreed not to really touch the existing subscribe text. And so like you can still do this today. You can still say, I want to subscribe at current group and it works. When we try to rectify, rectify the difference between uh, fetch is only about the past and subscribe is only about the future, that's where we're going to run into trouble is like subscribe at current group is almost always what you're going to want if you want to be at the live edge. Um, and there's an RTD cost if you split that out of subscribe. Suhas? I, I, we did had a discussion about the RTT and, and uh, the conclusion we came was at least uh, uh, we are talking about fetch, which is a few seconds. An RTT of uh, one RTT would not really make a big difference in 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 that that, that we want to uh, save an RTT to solve this problem at this point in time. It's an optimization. I would say like we started with something simple. Let's go implement it and, and come and say this is really wasting time in terms of my performance and everything. Then we can come and optimize it. Um, I don't think so. For fetch use cases, RTT is such a big concern. One RTT should, should not be a big concern to optimize at this point in time. Okay, I, I re-entered the queue just to agree with the substance of what Mo said, but disagree with one of his like final points, which is that like people will figure it out. I, I'm really not in favor of like these hidden hacks like built into the document that people have to sort of reason about when they're always struggling to understand. Um, like if if there are certain behaviors that make sense, like in certain cases maybe request you know sending a fetch before you know the live edge. And like their drawbacks involving like a couple of duplicate objects or like or like missing a couple objects depending on order you do it. Like we should actually, it's like a couple sentences to explain those trade offs rather than just like rely on people to reason about it themselves. Mo? Well, one sec. I just think Mike also pointed out that that doesn't even work. Like you can't even send the fetch because you don't know what the start is. So I think we're also arguing about nothing right now. Uh, no, uh, that's what that's what I wanted to uh, mention is that uh, the use case of I want the current group. From the beginning, um, I think the right implementation of that, I don't think we have to document it, but I think people will figure this out. The right implementation of that is subscribe, and then you start getting the live head, 
and then you go back to group zero, the object zero in that group. The reason that's important is because you don't know whether or not you want to go back to zero or whether you're already object 99. And so you're just going to wait for the object zero of the next group. So I think a real application is always going to want to find where it is in the group, not always go back to zero of the current group. Well, so like DVR catch up is absolutely a use case for like, I mean, starting with group zero, like if, if I want to start a program from the beginning and then fast forward to the commercials, right, then I'm going to request from group zero, I'm going to fetch from zero to infinity, right? Um, and then I'm going to get back stuff. And if I don't want to buffer the live edge, then that's in fact the only message I'm going to send for quite some time. And then as I start approaching the live edge, then I'll I'll like probably do additional fetches, then eventually send it do a subscribe fetch. So this is absolutely use case. And I mean to try to go back and answer my own question, I think we should like have examples of all this stuff because there are all these tools to use to solve these different use cases. And it's probably not immediately obvious to casual readers that this is kind of the intent of the design with all these all these tools we've created. Okay. Uh, my, my, my opposition is is don't put a use case in that presupposes that's what implementers want to do or should do. If we put a use case in that says to get the object zero of the current group, that's going to bias people to think that's the right design. When I think really the right design for any player is to just find out what the live head is first, and then decide whether or not you want to go back to object zero of that group or wait for object zero of the next group because you're already at ninety nine. So I don't think we should put an example that biases people to think that's the right implementation. Uh, okay, I, I think the I'm going to summarize the discussion as we think there should be some examples, um, I, and the one example which I threw out earlier was like just wrong, so we shouldn't include a wrong example. <laughs> like Ian, do you feel like you have enough direction to write the examples in PR that people are looking for, or do you need more from this group? No, I think I, I think so. And I can write the examples, but also um, I'm I'm not inclined to write the examples until like the rest of the stuff is sorted. Fair. Nothing personal, but sure. like, there's, um, I mean, that's another thing I'd like, I'm not sure if we want to, I don't know. I don't want to discuss it next, but if we have time, I want to discuss that too. But Okay. So I think we, we started this particular sub discussion on like the spelling of, but, uh, of start versus range. And I think we came to a conclusion that for now we're just going to do range. Um, and then there's like also then we have this other discussion about what the examples should look like, but I think, are we ready to move on to a different topic uh, that needs input? I forget what we said they were at the beginning. I hope somebody remembers. Actually, like just from uh, the perspective of trying to- so I think the other one was uh, the impl implicit gap. Uh, oh, how the gap, do we do we write down the way gaps yeah. are- I, I think the suggestion you made kind of, I don't know what like Ian had together made sense. Just want to clarify. If that's the, uh, that we got yeah, in or not. Text was good. I, I so, it. hold on. Martin wants to say something. Yeah. So uh, relevant to the previous discussion, I just want to follow up what Ian said about the examples. Uh, if 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 once the design is nailed down, he finds that the examples are quite daunting. I would be perfectly satisfied with like not writing them and then filing an issue that we need examples rather than holding this up for an indefinite amount of time. Thanks. Okay. okay. Especially since the draft deadline is a week from Monday. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. I think this is what um, Sue was mentioning the text. I think I liked Alan's suggestion. I just haven't copy pasted it into the draft or into the PR. So I was going to copy paste that. If someone objects, let me know. Do you want to just, if you, is it small enough? Can people read it? Anyone have any comments on? So, well, we don't have an object not available status. Do you mean objects that not exist? What, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I'm, whatever object it's object has one, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. My fault. Okay. There you Sounds go, reading good. the draft and like. Um, sorry, Will. Can, can I just comment on that language? It's it's very confusing there. The publisher omits them from the fetch response. All omitted objects have a status object not available. But if you're omitting the object, how can it have a status? Like it is an implicit. You're not actually omitting the object. You're transmitting an object that's empty with an object status of not available. That that wasn't what I intended in the text. The text is meant to say if I send you object one and then object three then object two, which is not on the wire, has an implicit status. It's as if you received object two with object not with object not with, OK, that's that's different. That, okay. that was what the text is intended to say. And if it's yeah. not clear, I mean, then I'm as long as we're yeah. on a single stream, I think you're yeah. safe with that, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think that's maybe the word Im implicit should be there in there. I don't know, but yeah, I, I put um, I put the a link to the specific. Uh, so if if you want to re, uh, update Alan's suggestion, please please feel free to do so in the in the comments. So, um, but I think okay. we're all on the same page of what we want. I think everyone's on the same page. It's just wordsmithing. Right. So yep. Um, uh, was there any other fetch related? thing that you need guys um, here i think so you don't want me to update subscribe at all well that's gonna be the next question once we're done with all the pure i oh we were gonna talk about ids yeah we should if talk this about this pr ID. has a different id space for fetch and subscribe is that how people want to see are people happy with that in this pr or do they want to see one that uses one id space i, I have a clarification question on that one like what we think we lose having one space or so what we think we gain having two space. Like I, I don't see the correlation, but I, I want to understand better for my understanding. So uh, I like if I'm going to summarize, if we reuse subscribe IDs, then it makes it so we don't have to later add max fetch ID, which we're going to ultimately need probably. Um, and we can just use existing match subscribe ID and you can have subscribes or fetches, but you can't like they all come out of the same budget okay. um that's one pro one con is there are things you can do with the subscribe id that you can't do with the fetch id like you can subscribe update and if that id references a fetch then that's probably an error which we wouldn't have if we had two different id spaces i don't know if there's other ed things i haven't thought all the way through but i see a lot of hands so probably yes so that's kind of how i see the trade off yeah. to me the question that i i mean i think it's a good summary alan i would say like does it make sense to flow control fetches and subscribe separately and i have no answer to that um, I'm just kidding. I think that to me, that's the determining factor. Like you would want, do you, would an application ever want to give more fetches, but not more subscribes or vice versa? Or is it like different? Okay. Well, yeah. Yep. We have a common priority space between fetch and, and subscribe. So I think it makes sense to have a common ID space. Suhas. Like I am on the other side, like, until we know exactly why we need one versus the other, I would keep it two separately for now. And, and resolve this when we decide to add the max fetch ID or not issue. Uh, okay, we have one for one against, which is definitely not rough consensus so I, 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 no, all right well okay i was picking two to one like, i i think i agree with will like i don't find suhas is like there might be some reason uh, to be convincing like if we find a reason we can separate the space later but i think they're compelling reasons to consolidate them um granted the error cases are annoying and i'm gonna have to write tests for them even if no one else writes those tests but, <laughs> but uh, um okay uh it, it seems like like it seems to me like if, if there's not a compelling reason to separate the flow controls, like managing fetch ID and subscribe ID separately just seems really fraught. Like, I don't know, you have to like have some sort of joint idea of the capacity you have, Mathis. Uh, I have a question about the separate flow control because uh, may there be cases where we have one subscribe for one track, but then have multiple fetches for the same track because I want to fill the gaps or something like that. And in that case, I would assume that we might want to have different flow control. Yeah, I think that's a good point, but you can have multiple fetches. And you can also fetch the same thing multiple times. So is Can anyone not live with either option? Or is it just a preference? I suspect sort of sounds we like enough. what's that, Ian? I suspect we don't know enough to know if it matters yeah. right now. Okay. Um, I, I think I might argue towards making them both subscribe ID because that avoids me having to open yet another issue, which is like fetches aren't aren't flow controlled or like I mean it, it merely I mean that's like I know. Until we're okay. gonna fetch until we're gonna add the like max fetch ID functionality if then why don't we not leave an open problem and just like put them in the same space? Okay, so if I can well, summarize, like we, we don't have enough information, we don't think we have enough information to decide if we need to flow control them separately or not now, 
And so, and nobody really can't live with either option. And Ian's proposal of let's just use the thing that is already flow controlled so we don't have a problem. And if we later find, if our information tells us that we do need these things separately flow controlled, we will split it at that time. Does that sound, does everyone agree that that's a viable path forward? See, so one thumbs up. Okay, two thumbs up. Okay, so I think that's what we'll we'll do. We'll we'll, we'll change it to use subscribe IDs space. Yep. Um, for now, it, and if, if somebody is like, "Do I really well. want to flow control differently?" Then open your issue. Pardon? No. Nope. No, I couldn't find a thumb, so I just gave you five thumbs. Oh, okay. <laughs> All thumbs from Mo. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, so I guess we should discuss the question of so people do not want me to modify subscribe yet is that the feedback well, um I, I think we should start the discussion uh, if, if you have like 15 minutes now i would i would like to start the discussion at least that will help be helpful will okay. well i think mo said he was going to introduce an immediate resolution that subscribe is only from the like the next object not even the current one right so I think that's what we should, if we're going to change it, we should change that now because that really changes. Even a player wanting to start at the current group is going to have to make a subscribe and a fetch in order to do that. And that's a change from what we have today. Mike? For that exact same reason, I'm inclined to not change it um, because I think there are a bunch of unresolved issues that we're going to immediately be faced with that we didn't have time to get into in Boston. Zuhas? I, I'll try to make a simple suggestion like based on my comments, like subscribe needs to have a filter, especially for the ABI scenarios wherein you need to stop at a particular group so that you can start at an uh, actual group uh, or object for, uh, for the new new quality. So we need we need a filter that says, you know, uh, start at stop at a particular place and start at a particular place. And when we don't know that uh, um, where to start, you need uh, something that starts uh from where your where the current live edge is or live edge plus one or whatever we call it as so we, we definitely need to clarify two things uh one is we at least in the, the, the basic thing we need is that uh in subscribe to say it's always uh from the current live edge onwards that should be clarified at least as part of this pr and what kind of filters we need and what kind of how do we want to uh, uh rename those filters or redesign those filters they basically need to say that it, Whenever someone asks, like how we how we define the fetch today, that whenever you ask something that's beyond the live edge, it's an error. In the same way, we should basically uh, clarify that any of these filters, that if it asks something in the past, it's an error or, or no objects or something like that. But having the filter to specify absolute start, absolute end, and current or the next something like that would, would be needed uh, for fetch. Okay. Yeah. No. I, I think I, I think you're right that I removed too many, a little bit too much functionality from. I tried to kind of split them in two in the mm -hmm. PR because I like took two modes from one and two from the other, and I think that was too aggressive. And so I I will definitely restore things to subscribe, but I like your your kind of phrasing of you know if you try to in the same way that if you try to fetch something from the future you get an error, if you yeah. try to subscribe to something that's entirely in the past you get an error. Yeah. Um, I think I think then the question becomes what happens if some of the data is in the past, but not all of it. So, uh, okay, no. Um, I strongly believe subscribe should be no parameters whatsoever. On um, it's just it's just literally forwarding, whatever comes into the relay gets forwarded. I think forcing the relay to do a a fetch or, or some kind of transaction upstream to do it is a is a different functionality that we should leave just for fetch, because I could even envision some relay networks that are just distribution. Not even cash, they're just distribution. And so they are not they're not gonna want to be told I have to go get this other object that is not in my live forwarding plane. So we need to keep the concept of forwarding relays as a real thing, not only caching, fetching relays. Alan. Yeah. So Mo, I think that's what you're saying is different than what Suas is saying. And what Suez is saying the range is for is like a true filter. It's a filter on the future. So it tells you, let's, you could subscribe starting at one group ahead of the current group. You don't fetch any objects, you don't get any objects. You have an entry in the forwarding table that when a new object comes in, if it doesn't pass the filter, you don't forward it. 
And then once you're past the start, you're forwarding things, then there's an end. Once an object comes, it's, or it's some, there's a little tricky to know when to remove this filter, by the way, because I have an implementation that works like this, but like, anyway, like objects come in and they're like, okay, this one's past the filter. So I'm not going to send it. So it's, it, it, it has nothing to do with fetching in other objects. It's just like removing objects that become available at the relay that are not getting forward to this client because they're outside the filter. So I think as an individual, what I'd like to see, I think is what Suhas proposes is like basically three modes in subscribe. One is just put an entry in the forwarding table. One is put an entry in the forwarding table with a start point in the future, put an entry in the forwarding table with a start point and an end point in the future. Or maybe a, do you need one no, that's only an end point? point? Yeah, I, I think they, they are kind of not mutually exclusive in that way. That you you, you can put a you can put a filter saying this is my start point. You can put a filter saying that this is my end point. You can you can don't have any filter that basically starts from wherever you are right now. So it's, it's none of these operations require a relay to forward or fetch anything upstream. It's it's just a live. But if you want to start live at a part, if, because you know that uh, I, I'm going to. Uh, up, upgrade to my 1080p track. So let, let me start, uh, I'm ending my current group, so don't send me any filter, any objects beyond this group. But on the next subscription, start at that uh, next group. So that's more all in the future, nothing in the past here. Ian? Um, okay, I have a clarification. I, I, I completely agree, Suhas, that that's a valid use case and I should not have removed it. But um, also the way we're discussing it now will make it easier, I think, for me to, to write it up in a clear way. That's, that's accurate. Um, I have a. Currently, we have the ability to start at the current group. I think we're just saying we're going to remove that. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Although Mike expressed a strong preference okay. to not so remove me, that capability, so I, I meant to address that also. But anyway, keep going. Let me ahead. let me propose a potential way forward that I think captures like the thing that people kind of want to get out of this, but but we kind of don't have a way to express it right now. Um, in the same way that if you try to fetch into the future, like, you know, you're gonna be told like, that's in the future, I don't have that, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, for subscribe, if you try to subscribe into the past, um, would it be plausible that the relay tells you, you know, how far back it is willing to go in the subscribe okay and just says like so if you try to start at the current group and it has it cached then it's like sure knock yourself out and if it doesn't have it cached it's like i don't cache anything sorry like you get what you're getting ahead go do a fetch because like i'm gonna have to do a fetch on your behalf anyway and like why don't you just do it yourself because like i don't have it um anyway i realize that's a proposal for a solution out of this and i'm not sure that's what people want but mike mike yeah i got in a queue to basically raise the issue that alan just mentioned which is um the current group uh behavior is probably the common case um for a lot of players and i know mo thinks that we should not uh urge people to do that but a lot of people will be wanting to do that based on how they have their segments set up and everything um and I think that the ramifications of changing subscribe to being a purely forwarding based system, there, there are too many things for us to deal with between now and the draft deadline um, to do that justice. And I would prefer to leave the existing subscribe behavior just kind of as is, which leaves some things uh, a little bit nebulous in terms of like, what are the expectations for when you have uh, cache misses when you have a relative offset. So I would like, you know, um, it, not the current group, but the one before. Um, and uh, you have some of that in cache. Um, some of that comes to you. Do you do you interpret gaps the way that you interpret them in a fetch, or do you not? Um, I think there are just too many too many things like that to to sort out um, between now and then. And I I would rather have more time to take a, a more thorough pass and, and do it right so that we can actually have subscribe just be the forwarding thing and that might take a third verb and like that is the combined thing that gives us some of those relative things that's you know fetch semantics from the past and subscribe into the future you know for certain use cases anyways 
Uh, Alan, okay. yes, we're running um, out of time, so please I, be brief. I'll try to be quick. So uh, I hear Mike that the the subscribe to the current group is a use case that's important, and I think and, and and previously we said like, well, there's a way to do it, but it costs an RTT, and I think there's like some heartache over that last RTT, and I. I, if I look in my crystal ball in the future, I think we're not going to ship a protocol that has the RTT in there. We're going to ultimately come to a solution that gives you a way to subscribe in the current group with no RTT. But maybe the argument of like, we don't know how to solve it between now and nine days from now is like legit. And um, so I think I could probably live with like, we leave it in with maybe a note that like, this is like not fit thematically with what we've decided about how subscribe works. And like, this is a work in progress, but at least Mike's implementation will be compliant with draft seven to do the things that Mike wants to do. So um, that may be a path forward that people can chart. I will say over, like, I do like the, and this is an individual, the way that we have resolved, like the content of your cash never impacts subscribe like subscribe behaves the same way regardless of the content your cash i think is a win and then technically fetch for the most part also does not care about the content of your cash because it'll know it'll go fill the gaps so like i think this is a general win for the protocol that we shouldn't lose and so what you just suggested about oh well maybe it's in your cash maybe it's not like that gives me the heebie jeebies but like otherwise um that's okay Suhas. I, th I think we discussed uh I think one of the things that came out of the meeting was subscribe is for now to future and fetches for now to past i think i think uh and we we have two examples that we went through in detail on how uh you can smoothly uh, transition from the current group if you're in the middle of the group and you join versus you can wait for the next group so many of the use cases especially in in, in the real-time world you the groups are not like two seconds they're like 30 seconds no matter where you join uh, Joining from the current group means you want to have 20 seconds worth of data dumped towards you. It will not work. If your if your group is like five seconds, maybe yes, you have buffer to manage all those things. So the, like what Mo was saying that if if a client that joins a, a, a group in the middle in subscribe, okay, it knows where the live edge is, and it knows its group duration, and from that it can make a choice thinking. So should I wait for the next group because I need to just wait for uh, three frames, or should I should I fetch the 90 frames that were there before me, and it can do the fetch. So I, I think having this operation gives us a way to uh, kind of implement on both both uh, both kind of implementations um, you know, with the subscribe and fetch combination. And I would say if, if you're if we go back on that one, I think uh, it is makes forces us into having cash dependency on subscribes. And and I would say uh, for the the next set of uh, edits we will make, I think we should clarify something on subscribe, saying that uh, it's it's for now and future. Um, to to reflect on the consensus we had last week. Okay, I'm up next as an as an implementer who actually does not care how we ultimately resolve this, um, but purely as an in implementer, it sounds like there's a lot of engineering to do on this still, and I would rather not have to touch my subscribe code before Dublin, and then like deal with it afterwards than like have a half baked solution now that I have to implement and then like go fix it and we turn it more in in December, uh, just because time is short. But, and there's like all this other stuff that we're still recovering from. Um, but, you know, like I, I, whatever, how we end up resolving this is fine, but like, let's just have the stupid overlap where you could subscribe to the past and just recognize that like that's gonna go away. But I don't have to fix any code right now. Thanks. Will. You're muted, muted Mill. Data refines. I'm really liking the clarity around subscribe for the future. I also acknowledge with Mike, the vast majority of clients will want to join slightly in the past. Therefore, I think the solution is a new verb. And I think we should call it join. And join basically forms a subscribe and fetch on the backside. So I'm willing to put a proposal for that for Dublin and we can see what, what it looks like. Because uh, I think that would be a, then a clean separation of church and state. And yet we can satisfy the majority use case. I'm okay with everything except join. It has to be called Fubscribe. No, it cannot be called Fubscribe. Join is Subscratch. a Scratch. Scratch. <laughs> Scratch. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, just to, like, I don't know if you want to bring us home. I heard a range of opinions from we've got to do it now and make subscribe only the future because that's what we decided. I heard let's not do we have a lot of code to catch up on. Let's leave subscribe as it is, even though it's not thematically consistent with what we agree, but we're gonna fix it. Ian, do you feel like 
<laughs> you know what to write in the PR. Um, um, I don't. I don't know that we have a great. I mean, let me let me just answer as a speaking as chair. I tend to bias towards like, let's make incremental steps that we agree on. So I feel like fetch is good. The changes to subscribers still TBD. So I would rather move forward with fetch and with like leaving subscribe and it's sort of like imperfect state because we can go implement fetch and get some experience with it. That's like my general bias towards progress. But Ian, what do you think? Okay, so I don't remove subscribe ID from the objects or can no, I? No, no, no. Oh, oh, I don't even know. I hadn't thought even through what subscribe ID and objects would mean. Mm. I mean, can how about I, I? How about one thing? I have an idea. What about if you you can't subscribe to things that are strictly in the past? Is that fine? That's that's a small amount of code. Yes. Okay. So like you can't in the same way you can't fetch things that are strictly in the future. You can't subscribe to things that are strictly in the past. That at least is like a reasonable. And then. I remove, and then I'll say you can still only subscribe to a track once. And so then I can remove track so subscribe ID and, you know, don't. Well, wait, so Ian, don't we, have a, we, have a, we, we have a common fetch and subscribe ID space. So the object headers still will have a like a, a, a no, retrieval remember, ID of some kind, right? So there's no actual have, wire image necessary, change necessary. Right now we have track alias and subscribe ID both. Yeah, objects. That, that's a whole other can of worms. But like, regardless, like anytime you're getting data, there's a there's like a some sort of retrieval ID, right? Yes. Yeah. But okay. I was hoping to resolve that in this PR. Okay. So. Does anyone have a problem with the only subscribe change that we're going to make in the next draft, along with fetch? Is sorry, two changes that I heard there. One, you can only subscribe to a given track once per session. And two, you cannot subscribe to something that is ex entirely in the past. And that that is like, and we're and we know where we're going. We're just not getting there all the way. Can, can people live with that in draft seven as we make our progress? Pending the introduction of subscribe. Sure. Cool. <laughs> okay. I think that does move us forward a little bit just in the right direction. Yeah. And then okay. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Uh, so um, if you have comments on this PR, please um, do so quickly, because it sounds like Ian's going to land the sucker sooner rather than later, ideally today. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, sorry, pardon part. me. I, ideally today, read the PR and comment on it, uh, because yes. I think Ian will commit this quite soon. Uh, and we will see you all next week. Thank you. Can I just make one point, which is that I had an action item out of the previous meeting to put a new priority proposal alternative out, which I have done. It's an issue. It's linked to the other priority PR. So if you have an opportunity to read it and provide feedback, please do. And you um, won't be here next week, right, Alan? I will not be here next week. Okay. So, so um, let's, let's, te let's technically put that on the agenda for two weeks from now. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody.